and we are live once again. It must be Friday. Back again for another Q and A session, and just kind of hanging out. Really, it's Friday afternoon. Let's take things a bit easy and just relax a little. That's the plan, anyway. But if you've got any questions, anything that you'd like to ask, this is the the place to do it. Um, as always, these lives will also be uploaded to YouTube. I'm actually uploading yesterday's as we speak. So if you do miss this or you miss some of it or you want to catch up with what's going on in previous lives, you can always do that. Have a look on YouTube. Uh, Dev with Zachary, as always, as everywhere really, to be honest. Go check that out. And uh, this one will probably be uploaded mm, couple, beginning of next week sometime. So, yeah, that's that's the idea. As always, kind of planning for about an hour. But happy for it to run over if uh, people get questiony. y uh, But, uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Like I say, at the moment, I am just uploading yesterday's live, which was a pre-show to the Twitch live stream. Um... We do that every Thursday at 1 p.m. BST. We sort of have a chat before we are going live at 2 p.m. BST on Thursdays on Twitch. And over on Twitch, we do kind of uh, more live coding. And well, at the moment, we're in the middle middle of a project, basically building a serverless Android application with um, Huawei's App Gallery Connect services kind of a Twitter clone to be honest so that's always quite fun uh, we're definitely getting into that now but that's on a Thursday so this is just more chillaxing and just here to answer questions while I uh, get other few other bits and pieces done it just so happens that today a few other bits and pieces is in fact the yesterday live streams Let's see if I can just move that. There you go, that's a bit better. But most importantly, got my Starbucks. So I'm cough caffeinated. And I'm all good to go. Yesterday we had, I had my, uh, well Virgin Media call it a, oh, I can't even remember what they call it now. I've got the box here. Let's have a look. Virgin Media call it a pod, is it? I think they call it a pod. This is the, the, the gubbins. Um, yes, Wi Fi pod. Yeah, a Wi Fi pod turned up yesterday during, I think it was during the live stream actually. Uh, and so that has now been installed and it's basically just a mesh router uh, and it seems to be doing a much better job. It seems to be getting better Wi Fi signal now in the office which is at one end of the house and of course the router happens to be right at the other end it's always the way but they do this service where you pay i think it's five pound a month and they'll give you as many pods as you need to fill your, in your house with internet and um you know they're just mesh routers they're just rebranded i forget what brand they are but they're just rebranded mesh routers and they uh, they're doing a really good job i'm really happy with them it's uh it's, it's working quite nice and it means i get much stronger signal in the office and also much faster signal so it's using the 5 gigahertz as opposed to the 2.4 because we're paying I think for like 350 meg internet but obviously on 2.4 gigahertz you ain't going to get that kind of speed so definitely nice that we're able to get that you know get a 5 gigahertz signal and actually use some of that speed uh, as we're paying for it and nothing's hardwired either, which is unfortunate. I did actually, when we first moved here, run a um, Ethernet cable throughout the house, <laughs> like a big long, like thirty meter Ethernet cable. But wife wasn't so happy with the Ethernet cable running through the middle of the house. Understandably, understandably, kind of tripping it up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Let's see, uh, so. Definitely had to uh, make a change there and <laughs> try and keep everything wireless. I think, and I think, you know, these mesh routers sort of set up, they work really well. As far as your computer or device is concerned, it's all just one device. It's all just one Wi-Fi signal. 
and you're just jumping about between each mesh uh, router or the main hub, whichever is giving the strongest signal at that time. So that's quite nice. And it's actually, I've, I used to use, I used to sort of split the Wi-Fi signal. So there was a separate 2.4 gigahertz and a separate 5 gigahertz um, signal that you could connect to. So they had the different SSIDs. But honestly, I've I've changed that when we when we installed this. I uh, got rid of that because we're now getting enough of a 5 gigahertz signal that any devices that support it are going to be using it automatically. And it just means that it'll degrade the signal when it needs to. So you 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 end up with a signal that always works anywhere in the flat. It's just the speed might get worse. So I, I'm quite happy with that, to be honest. I think that's a good good way to go. Um, and yeah, definitely it's improving the upload speeds of my videos as well, which is nice. Still trying to figure out how slash if you still can um, stream on TikTok via OBS. Everywhere on the interwebs says that you can, and you're supposed to have the option to, I just forget what they call it, remote stream or something like that, but it doesn't come up for me. So I don't know if it's one of those features that TikTok disables behind some arbitrary, you have to have this many followers or this many views or this many whatevers, or if it's my device, for some reason TikTok decides that my phone can't handle it or if it's just something that doesn't happen anymore I'm not sure hello hello welcome in how are you doing how are you doing just talking about streaming on TikTok via OBS um, it's definitely seems to have been a thing but I can't find how to do it anymore which is really annoying because I'd really like to be able to record these live streams at a higher resolution so when I can upload them onto YouTube in like HD or whatever, and they're not the kind of low frame rate, whoa, low frame rate mess that these lives seem to be. Because you can download the live when you've done it on TikTok, but the video quality is just so terrible. But yeah, I can't, I can't find it anyway. It, it used to, at least all the online guides, the problem is as well, all the online guides seem to be I assume you can't do it through OBS and stream it off your computer. Well, you, you're, you're supposed to be able to. According to the internet, that reliable source of information, you, you, there was an option within TikTok to, what they, they call it like remote stream or something, and you get the, all the stream URL and, and credentials to stream through OBS via a computer into TikTok. It seems like that was a thing, but I've got no idea if it's still a thing because all the guides and stuff are from last year. It, you know, the newest ones are from last year. So it's kind of like, well, is it still a thing? I might, I don't know, I might have to ask on Twitter or something, or maybe even ask on here. Maybe I'll do a video on here, actually. It's probably a good idea. See if any of the other tech talkers or anyone, to be honest, anyone that does live streams, um, if I could go live, I would test it. <laughs> That's the that's the thing. Like, yeah, I don't know if it's my device or if it's just something that doesn't exist anymore, or if it's it's um, you know behind another arbitrary. You must have this many followers or whatever. But I'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. I'll uh, I'll probably put a, a video up asking, and hopefully some of the slightly larger tech talkers can bless me with the wisdom. We'll we'll see. Uh, <laughs> I can't go live yet. But I am interested. Well, hopefully you won't. You know, it won't be long, and you will be there. I'm sure. Your followers going heading upwards. I'm sure you'll get there. I'm also certain as soon as you get to a thousand followers, TikTok kind of shadow bans you and stops showing your videos to people as well, because my general uh, view view numbers for the most part dropped off for quite a while there. Once I hit a thousand, so there's that as well. But that's just all part of the fun TikTok game. The mystical, unknowing algorithm. Well, 100% hit 1,000, and my account tanked. Yeah, yeah, precisely. So, yeah, I I don't know. I don't know. It's 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 what. That's not one of my problems with TikTok. Is is it's all hidden behind this mystical machine learning that 
basically gives them an excuse to do whatever they want. It can be brilliant, you know. You're able to get your videos out and your inf your stuff out. My sense of humour tanked. <laughs> well, that's not good. Should get that scene too. No one, no one, you know. It's the last thing we've got is a sense of humour. That you know, it's the one thing we can keep. But yeah, I've got no idea. I've got no idea. So we'll we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. But uh, we're getting we're getting somewhere now. I think things the last sort of day it started picking back up again, and uh, seems like my videos are going back out to people again, which is nice because that's kind of why we make them, isn't it? We we make videos because we want people to see them. So there we go. But I will I will try. Actually, I'm even going to make a note because I will forget otherwise. So let's make a note, uh, video on OBS streaming TikTok. We shall ask the gods. See, like, I just Googled it. And there is definitely, there's loads of YouTube videos, obviously. How to stream to TikTok. How to stream to TikTok from your PC. Easy and free. Um, but they're all, like, a good year ago. And... They all kind of require a setting that I don't seem to have. Um, uh, let's have this is uh, so, uh, this random random Reddit user, which you know, it's not possible yet. I believe it's available in closed alpha. Yeah, see, that's literally what I was about to. I've just I've. Yeah. Good old Reddit. Someone, someone on Reddit says uh, it's it's available for select users that have a high frequency of going live, and the, but the option is showing for some people, and hopefully it'll be shown for others. So I think I think you're right. I think essentially it's a thing that exists, but it doesn't exist for everyone, and you have no control over whether it exists for you or not. So that's just brilliant. It would be quite cool if I could get, obviously, get it set up on OBS. We can do things like screen sharing and and do a bit more stuff. We could have live TikTok coding, um, just like we do on Twitch. So that would be kind of cool. But hopefully, hopefully it will be rolled out to more people soon. Or you know, maybe I'll be blessed with the the TikTok gods. They'll shine down on me favorably and uh, decide I'm allowed. You could always try to reverse engineer the streaming endpoint from the app. Aha! That's true. That's true. We could, that could, nah, we could. I think the problem is knowing my luck. The second I get to any breakaway with that and, and figure something out, they'll probably then give me access, or they'll like release it for everyone, and then I wouldn't have to worry about it. Uh, it should be sod's law, really, wouldn't it? So that's a good idea, though. It's a good idea. Uh, I might have a poke about to see if it's. It might even be possible to enable the like force enable the feature. Um, I'll have a poke mainly because I really want to be able to do it don't give him ideas <laughs> yeah my my time is busy enough as it is hello hello Mr. Live Dev welcome in how are you doing uh, yes uh, it is true I don't really need another side project I've got enough side projects as it's going uh, both coding and I mean the absolute mammoth piles of Warhammer that I haven't even touched and have to paint and there's a lot, lot of things I need to be doing. Try M I T M the network requests. I, could, I doubt they serve the pin. Yeah, that's true. Can definitely see what what is and isn't going on. That's for sure. I'm great. Glad to hear it. Glad to hear it. It's always good. Um, yeah, it's, it could be an interesting little experiment, to be honest. Just to see, have a little poke around, see what's going on. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll make that a Friday afternoon project at some point. Uh, but yeah, definitely have enough side projects going on as it is. So we wouldn't want to spend more than like a, an afternoon on it because so many things. I really want to get back into into Warhammer painting. I've got so much I want to do with that, and just finding the time. Like it's not like I don't have time, but it's that it's it's assigning that time to the things that you want to do. Like I've also got. Loads of other things I want to do. I've, all, I've got right back into Fallout recently, so I've been playing a lot of that, and that's obviously time-consuming. And 
yeah, there's, I don't know. I want my cupboard cleaned out, but he always, we always don't get what we want, do we? No, that's true. That's very true. I do. <laughs> we do need to do that. We do need to clear out the cupboard. Oh, there's just, there's just so much to do. There's just not enough hours in the day. There's just not enough days in the week. But still, I think it's a good balance. You know, it's it's important to have side projects and have fun things to do. Uh, and hopefully not feel too pressured to complete them. Although, you know, actually completing the project every now and then would be nice and not just having loads of half-finished side projects. There is that. There is that. Oh dear. So what are we all up to this afternoon on a lovely Friday? How are we, uh, how are we getting on? Are we feeling ready for the weekend? I know I'm ready for the weekend. I'm ready for a nice little uh, work. Ah, <laughs> yes. Well, I am working. I'm working right now, kind of. I mean, no, I am. I'm waiting for a YouTube video to upload. I'm talking to you guys. Work. Yeah. That is, you know, it's all very important. It's all very important. Um, Try to think there was something else I was supposed to get done this afternoon. Uh, I've got another blog post that I need to do this afternoon as well. That needs to go out on Dev.2 and a few other places. Uh, I feel like there's like this mammoth pile of things that I'm supposed to be doing that I keep forgetting about. But I think that's everything that like, I mean, it's Friday, so there's some things that I need to do. Hello, welcome in. How are you doing? There's definitely some things like I have to do at the end of the day, for example. Like, I've got, um, you know, work logs and stuff to fill in and look at the stats for the week, see how the socials have been doing. I've also, the, actually, oh, that's a good point. I've just realised I need to film some TikToks for the weekend as well. Uh, I tend to try and film kind of ahead of time for the weekend so I don't have to do any filming at the weekend that's work-related. And then if I feel like filming something, you know, non-work-related, I can. But... Uh, that's just how it is. What does everyone work as? That's a great question. Ash. Yes. I, uh, well, I mean, you all know what I do, so I'm not going to bother answering. answering. <laughs> yeah. And even when I do, most people say, well, what's a developer advocate? One of the most unknown. Does having a tech TikTok help with finding a job? Ooh, that's a good question. I like that. Um, I think if you specifically just said, does having a tech TikTok help finding a job? In its in its own search, search situation, uh, maybe, also oh, a nerd widow, widow ripped my marriage, lost the tech talk. <laughs> um, if you're looking at tech talk specifically for a job, maybe, maybe not so much, but, you can obviously make a lot of good connections through tech TikTok, and that's that's really important. I think networking is a really important thing when you're looking for a job. It's so often not about what you know, it's about who you know. There are a million people, there's a million people out there that know how to code. Actually, millions of people out there know how to code, but it's about knowing the right people to get the right jobs. So if you can show that you've got, you know, those connections with people and that people are interested in what you're saying, that's always useful. And like you say, especially if you're, if you're interested in becoming a developer advocate, then definitely. Developer advocacy is all about communicating. It's all about talking with developer communities. So having a tech TikTok and showing... Uh, let's just... Um, that off showing that you are able to um, communicate well that you have, have an interest and a passion in tech that's always very useful so it does depend specifically on the job you're looking for but I think the important thing there is it never hinders no one's ever gonna go oh god he's got a tech TikTok. oh we can't hire him no one's ever gonna say that that's never gonna happen so You've only got possible benefits. You might not get much benefit, but 
there is never going to be a negative. So I I always say it's worth doing. I think if you can produce interesting content, if people well people are going to like it anyway. People there is such a huge tech talk community here. People will love coming on and all that sort of stuff. Well, see, um, SC Jobs may view it as a negative. Um, I mean, maybe. But I think it's quite unlikely, to be honest. I think, I think for the most part, it's either going to be a neutral, we don't really care, it's not really relevant to us, or it, you're going to be leaning towards more of the yeah, this is great. We like it. So yeah, I mean, and it and it definitely depends on how much the company values communication skills and networking skills. I think you know. I think it's very difficult thing for developers. Thanks, great answer. No, you're welcome. I think I think it's very difficult for developers to communicate. That's why one of the reasons why my job exists. If every um, if every developer was able to communicate well and just talk, <laughs> I, my job probably wouldn't exist because, you know, the developers that are writing the applications could then sell it to other developers. Interpersonal skills separate mediocre devs from great devs. Precisely. I get, yes, that's very true. I mean, that's the thing. That's, that's what's going to kind of expand your career from just being a a developer to something more great way to stand out during interviews yes exactly again yeah uh, a lot of people have the developer skills a lot of people have the ability to code the ability to do that sort of stuff but it is those extra skills it's the being able to present your ideas in a, in a way that other people can understand even more importantly present your ideas in a way that non-tech people can understand now that's a golden skill and that's what differentiates a normal developer from probably a senior developer or a manager position, a managerial position, or a developer advocate. And if you lack those skills, then you'll likely may struggle during job interview, job hunting, knowing how to speak to recruiters, etc. That's very true as well. Yes, if you've got those skills when it comes to actually looking for jobs and looking for the right people to work with, that is always going to be useful as well. Um, recruiters are an interesting breed and you have to kind of know how to handle that and find the good ones because there's a lot of bad recruiters out there. There's a lot of recruiters that uh, say they're tech recruiters and know nothing about tech. That's the biggest mistake. Like it's the traditional, oh, well, you've got um, Java on your CV. Is that anything like JavaScript? No, no, it's not. If a recruiter ever asks you that, that's a huge red flag to walk away very quickly. Because if a recruiter doesn't understand the industry and doesn't know what they're talking about, how can you, how can that person effectively represent you to companies? Because that's what they're doing. That's what a recruiter is doing, is presenting you the initial representation of you to companies. So... That's their very first impression of you is through a recruiter. And if it's a recruiter that doesn't know what's going on and they can't answer any of the questions that the company asks, that's going to put you on a back foot to start with. It's a terrible start. See you later. No worries at all, Ash. Thank you very much for stopping by. I think I think that was one of the, most, the greatest things about getting this position that I'm in now. That was through a recruiter. But... That was actually through a recruiter. I wasn't applying for this job at all. I was applying for a different job. And the recruiter, because they were good at their job, because they understood the industry and they understood my CV, my experience, where I'd come from, they were able to say, well, hang on, we've actually got this other position that looks really like it, interesting and like it would really suit you. Do you, wanna, do you want to apply for that as well? And that was the difference between a good recruiter and a bad recruiter for me. A bad recruiter wouldn't have even thought of that. A bad recruiter would have said, well, yeah, they've applied for this job, so that's the job we're going to send their application in for. Done. 
And there's nothing to say that that job wouldn't have been a good fit for me and wouldn't have been a, you know, would have been a good career move. Probably would have, but it wasn't as good of a career move and as good of a fit for me as this job. And I didn't know this job existed, but the recruiter took it upon themselves and figured it out. Because if you think about it, a recruiter gets paid when they get someone into a position. So, you know, when if you apply for a job, thank you very much for the rose. I don't know what that actually means, but thank you. Uh, this is this is only my third live on TikTok, so still not 100% sure, but thank you, uh, Monty. Um, but yeah, if you if you if you if you if you're dealing with recruiters, they get paid when they fill a position. So if you get a job through a recruiter, that recruiter will get some sort of payment for doing that process, and that will normally be a percentage of your salary, of your year salary. So to a recruiter, if they're only thinking about money, it, it really doesn't matter what position you get in as long as that the position that you get pays well <laughs> that's all that that's all that actually matters so if they've got multiple positions and they've all got the same pay scale or pay range it doesn't it doesn't matter to them so to have someone that's actually thinking about you thinking about what might be best for you in your career it's really powerful and it really helps and that's when recruiters can be useful otherwise you might as well just be going on LinkedIn and looking for jobs. Which isn't a bad way to do it, to be honest, because quite a lot of companies prefer not to use recruiters. Understandably, recruiters cost a lot of money. If you, you get someone through a recruiter, you have to pay them. Whereas if you host your job CV on LinkedIn, your job uh, spec on LinkedIn, that's free, essentially. So... Do, yeah, don't just rely, rely on recruiters. You know, you want to have multiple avenues to find jobs, is, is, is what I'm saying. And that is kind of end of my rant on recruiters for the day. <laughs> well, that's why I love this. I love these sort of Friday sessions because we can end up talking about anything, really. And you might have noticed once you get me going and talking about a subject, I'll keep talking about it for hours. So... <laughs> that works. That works for me. <laughs> oh dear. Oh dear. Oh, it looks like uh, my video is nearly uploaded as well. That's brilliant. So we can finish that off after this stream. So just to remind you that, yeah, that basically these lives do go up on YouTube. And also I have got other socials. So do please check those out. I've got a link tree link in my TikTok bio. So check that out. I'm on Twitter. I'm on Twitch. I'm on YouTube. I'm on Stack Overflow, several blogging platforms. Um, you, you, you search Dev with Zachary and you'll find me places. Um, GitHub, uh, other, other, other platforms that you could argue were some form of social, like... GitHub isn't a social network, but there is social elements to it. So, you know, it's worth checking out. Uh, and that's also where all my code for my code series is are, including the one that we're currently doing with the Android serverless application, which basically we're making a Twitch clone using Huawei's um, App Gallery Connect serverless functions. So we can kind of have a fully functional Twitter clone without having to run our own server which is lovely because I'm pretty sure basically every an, uh, mobile developer hates working on servers, hates server side stuff. And I'm pretty sure every server, you know, back end developer hates mobile development. So the fact that you need both is always, for, mo for pretty much any type of app, there's always been a bit of a kind of friction, really. Like, you know, you don't. If, it's very rare for someone to enjoy both so it's good to be able to develop these things without having to worry about the server let someone else deal with that it's the it's i think serverless is going to become a very big thing in the next few years just like cloud computing in general has become quite a big thing in the last sort of 10 years where i think we're moving into that that next step where 
you know, cloud computing great and all, but we still have to manage stuff. And we don't want to do that. Can we just pay someone to do that? And and sort of a pay as you go model. I don't trust the cloud. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't. I don't blame you to be honest. I think. I don't think you should ever one hundred percent trust something like that. I think the thing is as well. In recent years, we've had a lot of outages, a lot of proof that these things can't be completely trusted. Uh, these services like AWS going down, um, there are DNS services going down. There's things like Cloudflare and what was the other one that went down quite recently? But a lot of these things that actually front an awful lot of traffic on the internet and there's no redundancy. No one's, everyone's sort of piled into these things and gone, oh yeah, it's perfect. We can do everything on this platform. We don't need to worry about anything else without thinking, well, hang on a minute. What happens if this platform goes down? So where possible, you should always have some level of redundancy, um, even if that is redundancy that isn't actually being used and is kind of just dormant. So like a secondary cloud system or something. But so that if something does go down, you can switch over to it very easily. That's that's kind of the important thing. Uh, and certainly even from an end user's point of view, if you're using cloud backups, uh, you know, using some form of cloud to store your photos and that sort of thing, like Google Photos or Huawei's gallery or Apple iCloud or whatever it is, that shouldn't be the only place you're storing your, your, your photos. You, where possible, keep a physical copy of stuff. I've got, I mean, I've got hard drives coming out of my ears, to be honest, but keep, keep local copies of important data, at the very least important data. The amount of people that are like, oh no, my phone, I've dropped it and it's, and the, and it's, it's died. That's got, you know, the last 10 years of my memories on there and the, there's nothing, you know, all my baby photos and there's, it's not anywhere else. What do I do? Well, there's, you know, don't put your trust in one device. Certainly a device that you're carrying around in your pocket that will get broken in some way or another. Uh, I must admit, touch wood. I haven't got any... Oh, touch laminate wood. Uh, the the um, never actually particularly done any severe damage to a phone that I've owned. A couple of small cracks here and there, but they've always worked. I've been been pretty careful with my phones and tech in general. I think I'm probably a bit more conscious of that than the traditional user. I mean, you know, I'm not a builder going on builder sites, and I'm not going into situations where. My phone could drop on, I don't know, hard things. <laughs> so, yeah, maybe not. I don't know. Ah, oh, there we go. My video has finished uploading. That's brilliant. Let's uh, start filling that out. So this is the um, essentially my live stream from yesterday, which was the sort of pre-show to my Twitch streams. So we're streaming on Twitch every Thursday at 2 p.m., I'm kind of toying with the idea of increasing that. We'll see, we'll see how it goes. It's still going. It's actually going really quite well. Because uh, certainly yesterday we got a really good amount of viewers actually, and we would be able to hit affiliate on Twitch. But I'm not streaming enough to hit affiliate. So you have to stream for seven days within a month. And at the moment we're only streaming once a week, so it's only four four streams a month ish four or five but it's not enough so i'm considering we'll doing an extra stream each week at least for a while to get us up over affiliate it's possible i don't know um at the moment i'm a bit of a one-man team uh, <laughs> because um we've been we're, we're recruiting we still are recruiting if you're interested in becoming a developer advocate hit me up we are definitely recruiting both um, junior positions and full advocates. But we do have someone new starting in September. So the team is slowly growing and that will mean that I probably have more freedom of what I can spend my time on and what they can spend their time on. So between us, we'll be doing you know, more output, but it will feel like less work for each of us. If that makes sense, I think. So... Yeah, we'll hopefully, maybe in the next, I mean, we're already, what, middle of August, it's ridiculous, so 
maybe in the next like three or four weeks we will hit affiliate on Twitch. That'd be cool. When are YouTube going to update the uploading process, man? It's infuriating. It's slow. I, I have to say, I feel like it is really slow. And I wonder, I do wonder sometimes if it's that um, they kind of prioritize resources depending on the size of your channel, maybe? I don't know. I don't know how they do it, but I find it takes a very long time to process videos. It can take hours to upload a 10 minute video. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's the thing. Like, we have quite good upload speed. Like, it takes, I'd say, you basically uploading a full HD video, uh, YouTube video in, in real time in that, you know, the physical video is being uploaded at a speed of one minute per one minute of video. I just uploaded that 50 minute video and it's taken actually less time than that, about half an hour. But it's the processing after that that seems to take hours. Processing the standard definition and they process the high, high definition. But also, I also find that I find it very strange that you can you can have it to set to public and to publish as soon as it has processed, but it will publish it when it's processed the standard definition, not the HD version. And I mean, it's 2021. Who is purposely watching the standard definition version? I don't think anyone is. I think every single person has, I mean, unless you're on like a metered connection and you don't have a very fast internet connection, but I would say like 90, 95% of people that are watching YouTube videos want to watch the HD version or at least want to watch the non-standard definition version. So like 720p or something. Hello, hello, Jaden. Welcome in. How are you doing? Um, yeah, so I'd say like most people want to watch a higher, higher resolution version than standard definition. So why is it that if you set the visibility to public, it straight away shows it at standard definition, and therefore everyone floods in because like, oh, there's a new YouTube video. Let's watch it, and it looks crap. So why why isn't there an option to say make it public? once the HD version's ready. I'm doing okay, thanks. You okay? Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm good actually. I'm I'm pretty good. It's it's a Friday. It's Friday afternoon. I've had some coffee, some sugar. I'm not feeling too bad. Very busy morning that's actually this morning. I don't really know where the morning got away from me. But yeah, yeah, all in all, I'd say I'm doing pretty good and very much looking forward to the weekend. Have a little bit of a break. It's all good. It's all good. Um, so, but yeah, yeah, that's uh, that, that's just more rants about YouTube, to be honest. Um, but hopefully, hopefully, this this OBS and uh, TikTok thing will will show itself at some point soon. Can we go a Lego? Well, I mean, what well, goes to a Lego store? Um, always. Can we buy anything? Well, I don't know about that, but we can certainly go look. Do love me some Lego. Um, definitely. I need 3,167 pieces. <laughs> what the hell are you building? <laughs> that's uh, that's quite that's quite a requirement. Oh. Oh, I see. That's the piece number. You need that specific piece and lots of it, I'm assuming. Oh, this is for the heart keychains that you're making, I'm guessing. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, quick little plug there. So, Trailmaker Designs is my wife. And she is working on some new key rings and stitch markers. And one of the things she's working on is, is these Lego pieces. So, with this Lego piece... If you put two of them together, it makes a heart, and that's cute. And then when you take them apart, you can have each have a separate part of the heart. Ah, but do go check her out. She also makes very funny TikTok videos, so definitely should be giving her a follow because her content is great. And occasionally, I even make an appearance. Uh, mainly just me making a fool of myself because I've got no idea what she's doing or talking about. It's all witchcraft to me. Crafting in general is witchcraft. Uh, but yeah, yeah, there is that. 
Yeah, yeah. Other than that, I don't know. What, am I, what else am I doing uh, this weekend? Probably not too much, to be honest. Probably not too much. Taking, taking it easy. Enjoying a break. Anyone, any of you guys up to anything interesting? I really must get out of this habit. I always use guys to mean anyone. And I know that isn't politically correct. Clearing out the cupboard. Oh, are you now? Good for you. I'll watch from afar. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I know that I should really stop using guys, but I can't, as usual. Yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm helping, definitely. That's my excuse and I'm sticking to it. I'm observing. Making sure things are done to, to scratch. I'm going to go on holiday at the end of the month. Very nice. Very nice. Where are you uh, going on holiday? Two. Um, I've booked some time off actually next month. I remembered finally to book some time off. I haven't booked any time off other than two days during when we were moving house. Uh, I'm going to Denver. Ooh, cool, cool. Just any particular see family or just, just having a nice holiday. Um, but yeah, I took, I've managed to take some, a week off in September. Not that I plan to particularly do anything, but I mean, we live in London, so there's more than enough things that we can do like vaguely locally. Uh, so that's probably what we'll be doing is kind of local, uh, just a nice holiday. Sounds good. Why not? I think after the last year and a half that we've had, I think people deserve a bit of a break, deserve to just kind of switch off go do something that's just nice i think that's it's very important um i think people people have possibly realized how important sort of mental health and self-care is and uh how previously maybe people just weren't quite so kind to themselves and you know it's so important so you see you see it so much in the sort of tech world people getting burnt out people doing way too much and not giving themselves any time to themselves i mean I, I was the same to be honest i was terrible i've been terrible at it for years trying to do it a bit better now trying to you know give myself some me time give myself some time to do hobbies and it doesn't all have to be work it doesn't all have to be cleaning it doesn't all have to be stuff that feels like work anyway um so yeah yeah i think that's so important and definitely definitely worth doing just to have some some time to yourself or go on holiday with your family or just embrace relaxation home it would be nice it would be nice that's the dream <laughs> um yeah i mean I must, yeah, I mean, having said that, I think it's it's kind of a uh, interesting idea that I haven't really need, felt like I needed any time off. Whereas, like, like previous jobs, I always felt like, destroy the patriarchy while you're at it. Yeah, why not? <laughs> um, yeah, I like, previous jobs, I felt, oh, God. When's the next time I'm gonna get a holiday? Oh, I need a holiday. Oh, I need time off. Oh, I need days off. Oh, it's been weeks since I've had a day off. But I think that's kind of a good sign of a job that you're really enjoying is when you're like, didn't even think about it. Didn't didn't really even cross my mind to have holiday. I mean, it helps that I'm mainly working from home. I work from home four days a week at the moment. So that helps. But yeah, it's, I guess it's just that kind of, you know, it doesn't all feel like work, so it doesn't really feel like you're having, you're stressed or you're doing too much. Uh, so it was a nice, it was a nice feeling. It's a nice issue to have, but at the, end, at the same time, especially here in the UK, we have an allotted amount of holiday leave that we're meant to take, and if we don't take it, it gets lost. So still got to take it. Still got to do something with that, and need to you know, start being a bit more motivated with that. I think as well, certainly here, springtime feels like you've got, we've got like a million public holidays. So there's certainly like two months there where you've got like 
four or five days off anyway that definitely helps that definitely spreads it out unlike at the end of august there's another bank holiday for us so it doesn't feel like i don't know week on net week on end working I don't, know, I don't know just rambling at this point but that is uh that is what it is still should make sure you get some holidays in definitely important all right let's have a look at this yeah see this youtube video is now processing standard definition hurry up it hasn't generated any thumbnails either that's really annoying i have to figure out some thumbnails hate thumbnails beta my existence but there we go how is oh, i've got to ask oh actually that's weird I think I, I've, I've got my microphone, but it's not actually on. I just realized that the light power button, the light isn't on. So I think I've probably been talking to you all through the phone microphone. And I was trying to be all fancy like, why is that not working then? That's weird. Hmm. That's annoying. I do hope it's okay. That is weird. Because, yeah, it's here, and I was like, oh, yeah, you know, everyone's going to be able to hear me. So amazing. I mean, to be fair, the phone microphones aren't that bad, and it has, like, built-in noise cancelling. So, again, it's not that bad. But I, this was working yesterday. We did that yesterday. I don't know. I don't know what's going on with this little USB C hub that I've got. It's charged. Like, my phone's charging, so the hub is working. But nobody's home. I don't know. Oh, well, I'll, uh, that'll be for another day. I, I mean, to be fair, the hub itself is... I mean, I bought that when USB-C was just starting to become a thing, years ago now. It's pretty old, and it wasn't particularly amazing when I bought it. It was kind of a cheaper model, so maybe I just need to get a new hub. Maybe. But, you know, do love me some USB-C. The other option is, of course, I get an adapter for the microphone and just plug that directly in. But then I wouldn't be able to charge my phone while I'm doing this, because that's the one thing about going live, is it does like to suck the battery up quite a lot, so there is that. Who knows, who knows, it was working earlier. I don't know. Something, something's happened. <laughs> oh dear, right. Well guys, I think I'm actually going to wrap it up there. Um, as always, it's been a pleasure hanging out with you all for a little while. It's great fun. I enjoy going live on on here. It's it's actually I really enjoy it. It's a lot of fun. And as always, we are live every Thursday and Friday, both days at one p.m. BST. So do come check it out. And on Thursdays, it's kind of a pre-show before we go live on Twitch at two p.m. BST. So that's like a fixed hour where we just kind of. Chat about what we're going to do on the live stream, chat about previous live streams, Android coding, all that sort of fun stuff. And then this one, every Friday, it's just more of a hangout, really, and just chilling, really. So asking questions and all that sort of fun stuff. So anyway, for now, I'm going to say thank you very much, and I will see you all next time. Bye for now. <laughs>